just landed. Well, it's the first morning <laughs> and uh, we went straight to the boulangerie. We picked up bread, we bought pain choc and a croissant each okay. and a couple of coffees. We're about to go and enjoy. Yum. This right now. It's probably a good 50% of why we crossed Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> We couldn't quite believe that we'd arrived in the Caribbean after sailing over 2,500 nautical miles across the Atlantic to get here. We couldn't wait to explore the islands some more after some well-deserved rest. We said goodbye to Jonas, who had to head back to Canada for some work projects. We were so grateful again for all his help along the way. Having him on board made our passage so much more relaxed and we had a great time. We've woken up at like at sunrise to go for a run and start off with the first coffee we've probably had on board since Mindelo, which is crazy. So three weeks since since coffee. I mean, we had one yesterday, but this is the first one we've made on board. I decided not to drink any coffee on the passage as I find it can make me seasick. Also, I wanted to make sure that I could always sleep reliably to be well rested for my next shift. How good is this? It's already getting really hot, but- We need to leave earlier. It feels so good to just be sweating and a little bit tired and sore. <laughs> after like three weeks of sea. Hey, that's what you're doing. Hello. Didn't see you there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how to explain this without it being boring. We uh, installed a new instrument panel or instrument display in Mandela and we got new wind installed. And so now we're slowly starting this process of moving the boat from old uh, standards into new standards and the latest step in that move is trying to get the depth from the old depth sounder to work on the new display and rather than change the whole depth sounder instead what we've done is just bought a converter that goes from the old standard to the new standard so I'm just installing that and then hooking up the depth to the uh, the backbone it's called and uh, and it worked which I was pretty amazed by I didn't expect it to work and it worked on the first try and so now it all comes down to that one display, which means that we can get rid of all the other old displays that are just taking up space. And uh, yeah, bring, start bringing Navica into the 21st century. <laughs> yeah, we don't have like a huge amount of boat jobs to do, but we just figured there's a um, specialist here that does rain and stuff like that. So we asked him if he had a solution for it. And here we go. Here we have the depth now on our amazing little rain display thing that we love. Probably one of the best updates we've had this year, I think. We had these really old Sea Trek. They don't even they don't even exist anymore. It was like this old brand that used to make autopilots. And our autopilot we still have is still of that brand. But anyway you can't find them anymore and some of ours are broken. We want to get rid of them. You can see there's the binnacle here. Excuse this by the way. But yeah, these ones oh that's our autopilot but this one was the one that we had before. And it was okay. But and then these two don't work. So gonna get rid of them and what we're gonna do is move the autopilot to here as well have it here and we're gonna probably take down this uh, binnacle which is nice but see the cockpit's just so small that it makes it just kind of you can't see anyone behind it basically so when we get rid of it I think the cockpit will feel a little bit more open and we only need two displays anyway one for the one for everything wind depth and speed and the other one with the, for the autopilot i mean ideally we could upgrade our autopilot system as well but you know can't have it all can't have it all after some boat projects we joined some friends of ours for our first snorkel mission in the caribbean we were dying to get in the water and start exploring the underwater world that the caribbean had to offer we took the dinghy for a recce and we were surprised to find an interesting coral reef just off the anchorage in saint anne Reefs like this are something we hadn't got to experience much in the Mediterranean or the Atlantic, so we were buzzing to see all the wildlife down there. After a successful snorkel mission, we headed back to the boat and moved Anchorage to be a little bit closer to the marina and chanery. I 
It looks like there's like a, a connector I was using that shorted across the positive and the negative on the solar panel wiring. And I'm not sure how that short happened, but it seems like it did. And it just like melted the negative side completely. Luckily it didn't, lucky it didn't cause a fire. So now I gotta cut it all out and uh, rewire it and do it better this time. Maybe add a fuse in somewhere. Here. It was like a... If that white plastic existed on both sides before, uh, and now on the, on the negative side it's completely melted and gone. The reason we checked was because we were taking a look at the Victron battery monitor. It just seemed like the batteries were a little bit too low. Because there's quite a lot of sun and there's quite a lot of wind, and they're lower than they should be. So then we went to check and see if we were getting any solar power, and um, weren't getting anything from solar. Not great. After a few days of fixing things and landing in Martinique, we left St. Anne and Le Marin and made our way over to our first real anchorage along the west coast of Martinique with our friends Jesse and Yann aboard Adhara. When we got there, we went for another swim and snorkel and explored the underwater neighborhood. Pretty exciting day for us because we're gonna, for the first time ever, go diving with our own gear. We picked up some gear in Tenerife because we found a pretty good deal and we knew we were coming here to the Caribbean and it's just great diving all over the place. But we've never dove, we've never dived, never divin, um, with uh, without like a you know dive school and going out, but we um. We're snorkeling over at the point over here yesterday, and it's really beautiful and really chilled, easy. And uh, so we're gonna go over with our friends on the boat next to us, which is amazing. Let's see, uh, on that bar, can be pretty cool and pretty empowering. So we're just gonna take the bottles back, get them refilled, and then we can go dive with everyone. Well, I think if you sit there and I sit here and we do them together. Diving with our own gear off the boat was a really cool experience. We're big fans of freediving the reef, but it's also nice to be able to spend a bit longer down on the reefs, and nothing better than going straight off the boat. We were glad to have scoped out the spot beforehand, as it now felt pretty familiar. Weirdly though, visibility wasn't quite as good as the day before, 
And this time we even have quite a strong current, maybe because of the different time of day. So we didn't venture too far out to make sure we could get back to the dinghy okay. I couldn't see anything with the mats, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. After the diving, we continued making our way north along the coast of Martinique. We stopped in an anchorage called Les Trois Îles and rented a car for a day to explore inland. We made a stop at this incredible boulangerie, which is still the best one we found since then in Martinique. So we picked up lots of extra bread and pastries to freeze and bring with us to the Ooh. other islands. Look at that. Some of the best poissons I've owned that I've had ever. And a whole bag <laughs> <laughs> of other poissons and almonds. Uh, and uh, Oh my God. Where's the best place to go? Here? I guess just straight across. Then we headed inland, up into the dense forest to go for a walk. We weren't used to forests like this, so green, so lush, and a very different vegetation to what we'd been seeing in Europe till now. Started raining. Yeah, there's so many schools at the moment in the Caribbean. It's kind of crazy. It's every what hour? Hour or two. Yeah. Over the last week or so. Something kind of fun about being in the rain, though. But well, knowing that it's gonna pass is not. And also, bad. when you're in a forest surrounded by trees, it's kind of fun. It smells good. So we're just gonna let this one pass and then um, head back down, I think, before it gets dark. The next day, we made some progress on the binnacle job, which included moving our autopilot to install it next to our raymarine instrument and removing the binnacle itself. Lars wanted to keep part of the binnacle to use as a small table, so he sanded that down. So, tools at the ready. Masks. Earplugs so we don't get crabs in our ears. Very important. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Then we thought it was time to clean our hull after the Atlantic Passage, where we'd managed to accumulate quite an ecosystem. When we arrived in Martinique, we'd noticed these small barnacle type things that had attached themselves to our hull. We'd never seen them before, but quite a few other boats also had them after the crossing. Time for a shower. So far, Martinique's been the perfect landing place for us after the Atlantic Passage. Thanks for watching this far. If you enjoyed these videos, then give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Join us next time as we explore some underwater caves, go on a hike in the remote part of the island, and continue our sail up north to Guadeloupe.